That's one. All right, this is my Volkswagen Fastback. I have to remove the subframe. Now the subframe sits underneath the rear end here. It's held in by five bolts. One in the front, two by the shock towers, and two somewhere else in the back end. But I'm thinking probably the best way to attack this is to slide some two by 12s up underneath the vehicle here under the back, get this thing rolled up on some ramps, and drop the engine first because it's just so incredibly heavy. You guys have seen me pull the engine before, so I'm really not gonna go into extreme details to how to pull the engine out of a Type 3, but I will give you a link down below in the video description so you can see how I do it and how I put the engine back in. Once we've got that engine out, then I'm going to attack the subframe bolts, then put a jack or some kind of support up underneath the subframe, lift the car up by that subframe just a bit, then somehow prop the body up so it's up in the air, once that is, is held up, then I believe I can just drop the subframe back down, and if we're high enough, we should be able to just roll it right back out the rear end of the vehicle. So here's hoping. I don't know what else we're going to run into. This would be a whole lot easier if, of course, I had a lift, but I don't. So we're actually working in a backyard. I'm not doing it in the driveway right now because there's a whole bunch of corona zombies running around the area, and I don't feel like dealing with any of the maniacs that are just... You, you see him in the news. Everybody's just acting total bug shit crazy. Otherwise, I'd be doing this in my driveway right now. So we're just going to stick to the backyard. We're safe. This is a good place to work, and we're just going to push away at it until it's done. Hopefully, it'll be one video. If we don't get lucky, it'll be two. <laughs> I think you guys will appreciate watching two videos nonetheless. Thanks for watching, guys. Big booty bitches. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we're back. You saw how the engine came on out of there in some of the previous videos that I've done before. But what we've got down below is we've got a greasy bell housing down in here. And uh, it's quite a mess. I think the main seal on this engine is leaking, so we're going to actually pull it apart and just replace the seal because it's easy to do it while the engine is out. Uh, what we're also going to do is we're going to remove the clutch wing nut from the top over here. And I gave B a custom tool that I made, which is just a socket, and I cut a couple of slots in it. So this actually will fit right over the top of a wing nut and very, very easily removes that. And of course, on a Type 3, you can reach it from the engine compartment. On a Type 1 or a bus, it's a lot harder to do. But in this case, she's got a tool, so she's going to demonstrate. Go ahead, work that tool. Got all my extensions that I own. just makes it a whole lot easier to get that, that far in there. Now when that wing nut comes off, do not push the cable back in. Because what will happen is you'll push off the cable and it'll come apart on my clutch assembly inside the car. And then I have to pull the pedal assembly back out later. 
chances are I'm probably gonna have to do it again, but we're gonna try not to mess it up. <laughs> you lost attention. The there it is. Winner. Show me your nut. There it is. Fantastic. VW Garage. I'm the Duck Man and I'm B McQueen. There she is. Today we're starting up the project of the subframe removal from the Volkswagen Fastback behind me because what we're doing is we're going to be upgrading the rear end on there to a later IRS rear suspension. Mainly because I don't like the way it drives and because the transmission is currently having problems and I have an overabundance of late model independent rear suspension Volkswagen parts. So I think what we're going to do is upgrade it all at the same time. Now, yes, I know IRS independent rear suspension, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing as swing axle as far as both being independent. But here in the United States, Volkswagen called it an IRS, and that's what it is. Now, I have to say that every single time because there's always somebody that wants to tell me that I'm wrong. <laughs> Any opinions? Okay, not quite the opinion I was thinking of, but it <laughs> worked just fine for me. So anyways, as always, guys, licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media network channels, as well as B. McQueen's Instagram. She's got a large number of followers on there, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that she will blow past me on the Instagram supporters, that she'll have even more people following her than I by the end of next month. So here's hoping. Do it, guys. Get over there. Follow her right away. Anyways, we'll be back in just a second right after the intro. Appreciate it. Alright, up under the car here is a shift coupler. I removed the grub screw from him, and he's already loose. I wanted to do that with you guys watching, but it was impossible for me to get the camera under here. But nonetheless, I clipped a little safety wire off of it and pulled the grub screw out. So that's now officially disconnected. We have to remove the bolts, and you can see just how bad a shape this plate is in here. You see the four corner bolts that are in it? Those all have to come out. In this case, they, they've rusted and actually pulled through the chassis. So we're going to have to do a little repair on that. This is the same. But the one in the middle is actually what's securing everything together, so we're going to remove that. We also have to remove the body bolts over here. There's one. And then up at the top of the shock tower, way up over here, there's the last one. And there's two, of course, on each side. Those two is the same on the opposite side. So we've got to remove them also. We're just about ready to start pulling out that subframe. The last thing that I forgot to do, which we haven't done yet, is i got to remove the starter wire. And that's up on the opposite side over here, so let me get that off of there too. And, uh, oh yes, and the brake line right there. I got to loosen that one that attaches to the T once we've got that out. And then I believe that subframe is officially freed from this body and uh, we should be able to drop it. Well, wish me the best. I've got a block of wood over here on the clutch pedal to hold that cable forward so it doesn't come off the hook underneath. I've also got a piece of wood between the seat and the brake pedal. And the reason why I've done that is when I disconnect the brake line in the back, all my brake fluid won't leak out of it. It'll hold the master cylinder piston in a different position. That way, the fluid has no ability to drain out the back. So currently, it's uh, it's safe where it's at. I've got some nice brake line wrenches here, which were courtesy of Willie Oberland of my YouTube friends. I thank you so much, Willie. I told you I was going to use these sometime soon. It's been about a year since you sent them to me, but uh, <laughs> we're going to demonstrate them being used in this video. All right, these wrenches are really cool. I'm trying to shoot this for you guys with two hands here. This is not the line I'm going to loosen. I'm actually going to loosen this one, but I don't know if I can. Well, it looks like I can. But it has a split end on it, but it's uh, five-sided. So you can slip it over this like this and then lock it onto the nut and then loosen it. And they won't spin like they will on an open-end wrench because they're contacting the nut on, on most of its corners. So, let me get that back off of there. This is an 11 millimeter. If you're doing this job, you'll probably need 11 unless somebody did something goofy. This is the one I need to loosen here. It's attached to the T. Alright, of course I'm having trouble getting the wrench on there with uh, one hand. Anyways, you guys get the drift. We're going to demonstrate this again when the whole thing is out. Here's the frontmost mount on the subframe. This is the big bolt that goes through the middle. There's normally a rubble grogi that goes over this. These are the four bolts I had told you that had pulled out of it. Here's the original one. Look at how destroyed that is. I mean, it was just totally crumpled up. 
just mangled. Two of these bolts I thought were actually pulled out of the body. They're still mounted in there. These parts came out with the, the uh, floor pan. So there's a little section of floor pan in there I'm going to have to fix and weld it up. It's not a big deal, but it's one of those things that still needs to be addressed. So we will be taking care of that. may not be in this video because that's really not what this video is about. But nonetheless, this is the old one. This is the new one. We're going to switch them over. This one looks like it's got a little bit of surface rust on this side. This side, somebody actually coated it with some kind of undercoating. I don't know that I want to clean all that off. I think that's pretty well um, keeping the, the paint and everything together. I can see a few places where it's chipped off. The paint is still nice and shiny. So I think we're just going to clean it and throw a coat of paint on it and go with it just as is. The other side, however, we'll give it a quick phosphoric acid and brush down and uh, throw a coat of paint on that and I think it'll be just fine. But it certainly won't look like this anymore and the reason why this looked this bad is because the car had filled up with water and it had pulled up in the area uh, in the back, underneath the back seat and rusted out the floors. I actually patched up the floors on Ruby uh, a few years back and they're nice and solid now but obviously that's not fixed so we need to deal with that. All right, right now we've got the ATV jack up underneath supporting the entire rear subframe. And over on the sides here, on both sides, we've got a couple of jack stands holding the car up. And I've shaken the car, and that's more stable than I thought it was going to be. I'm probably going to slip a couple more jack stands under just in case. I think I'd rather be safe than sorry. And they're currently under the uh, corners of the floor pans, right where they attach to the body. In a real rigid section where there's real, some really beefy boxed uh, corners and angles that shouldn't crush down too much. I could have gone up underneath the stock jack stand point, but I don't much like using those because on older cars they tend to be compromised and they tend to get holes punched in them and they just mess up your body. So I don't use those at all. That's strictly emergency purpose only, so leave them alone. But right underneath the rear fender here, we've got 27 inches to the ground. The wheel is 24 inches tall, so we should have a few inches to spare depending upon how wobbly or wonky it chooses to get from there. But I think we'll be able to roll this backwards. The shock towers are a little bit taller, but the entire subframe, when it comes out, I can pivot it. And I think I should have no problems getting it out from underneath the bumper and underneath the real rear valence that's there. And once, of course, once we got that out, it should be easy. Hey, how are you? Me? Yeah, you. Who else? <laughs> You look like you were getting a little bit uh, tired there watching me just kind of turn bolts and stuff while I was underneath the car because it really wasn't enough that I could have you do because what I'm doing here is kind of a new experience to me too. But this is work you've done before. You know what to do here. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're removing the wheel. I made the mistake once again in not loosening the lug nuts first before I jacked everything up, but uh, I was lucky to discover that the impact is actually going to turn them just fine. <laughs> yep, there it is. Go ahead and yank them off of there. We'll get this wheel taken off and then we'll have a look up underneath and see what we got. That's one. Switching up to my other sized lug nut. There it is. Bigger nuts? Yeah. <laughs> I have two different sized nuts. That's all I'm going to say with that. You guys can think about it. Yeah, and it's out. I very gingerly pull that wheel off of there and be careful that you don't rock the car too much. It's stable, but if you rock it enough, it'll fall off the jack stands. Lift just a little bit, pull straight back. There it is. Out of the way she goes. All right, well, we got that wheel off of there. Now, down below here is the uh, wheel hub and the shock absorber. The last body bolt that holds the subframe on is actually right up under here. You see it up there? Yep. It's in a goofy spot, so this shock has to come out. Mm -hmm. It attaches on the bottom and the top. They're probably going to be 17 millimeter nuts. Yeah, there's wrenches around here somewhere. We'll get it for you. And you can pull that shock absorber out, that big white stick that you see standing vertically. Yeah, you got a good grip on that. And, um, yeah, that needs to come out. <laughs> it's attached, yeah, it's attached at the bottom to a sway bar. That's that big gold rod that we were talking about earlier underneath there. Yeah. That's uh, attached at the bottom. It might try to um, spring loose or something, so don't be surprised when you get the last thread off on the bottom if it just snaps a certain direction. It won't go far if it does it, but it might go boom, just a little bit, so be prepared if you see it. Right. But you should be okay. Let me get you some wrenches, some tools, and uh, those are the last two bolts that's holding this all in. After that, we put the wheels back on and we pull that subframe back out. Give me a thumbs up. All right, now imagine you've done all this without your knee pads on. I know. I'm, I'm used to being on my knees. All right, moving them shock absorber nut. Go ahead. Yeah, that, okay. Uh-oh, hold it on there straight. Okay, that bolt that we found that was up underneath here was actually a welded in nut. Uh, that nut being captive was not meant to turn. It's welded into the shock mount. So actually, I discovered, and I always wondered, what the hell these little holes were for up here in the trunk. And the answer is, those bolts are actually 
facing straight down. So there's no reason for me to pull these wheels off. There's no reason for me to remove the shock absorbers. Everything is actually accessible from the top side. Ain't that convenient. I've got all five of the subframe bolts removed and I think that the only thing that's holding up the rear subframe right now is the ATV jack that's under it. Let's see what happens. Is it going to come loose? Place your bets now everybody. <laughs> Looks like it's going. Come on now. <laughs> it's still attached. It's probably just some rust holding it in, but it's still in there. <laughs> it was going for a minute. Yeah, it was. It, it definitely moved. It, it came down a bit, but it, it's back in there. Let's jack it back up again. Oh, I see what it is. Hmm. It's the Z-Bar. The Z-Bar is holding it up. Huh. Yes, the Z-Bar. I forgot 68s and I think 67s also had Z-Bars. The Z-Bar essentially was a helper spring, so that way you could put softer torsion bars in, but when the car got loaded down, it gives you an additional spring rate, a different spring rate. It's kind of like a progressive spring, and uh, it attaches to the body, and that screws down into the um, swing arms at the ends. So that's what's going on right now is the Z-Bar is holding it up. I forgot that that's, uh, that's attached to the body, and that's all going to get removed. We're no longer going to need it. And those are some rare 1968 parts, one year only. Well, two years only, actually. 67 had them all, so yeah, that's what it is. It's the Z-Bar. Ah, oh, Vertifurk. One more try. Z-Bar is out. All the rest of the bolts are out. I don't think there's any more lines, cables, hoses, wires. Except the backup light wire, but we'll get that from the backup light switch when I can reach it. Going down. Making lots of creaking noises. Very creepy. Duckman does not like. Very, very scary sounds. Don't kill the Duckman. Not today. At least let me get coronavirus first. I think it's out. It's on the ground. Okay. I think we're free. Alright, that brake line was supposed to have detached from the, uh, the body, but it did not. As prescribed, it did not. You know, I wish this stuff were covered in my instruction manual, but for some reason dropping the subframe isn't in it on any page that I could find. Not to say I'm not missing pages, but uh, it's not in my manual for whatever reason. But the brake line here is clearly attached to the body. It needs to be detached somewhere along this line here. I'm going to actually detach it down in here, get the hard line off, since all this hard line is going to have to be replaced anyway. Chances are I'm probably going to have to put a different soft, uh, flexible line on there too, because the lengths of everything is going to be all different. So we're going to be disconnecting it down in the bottom on both sides, and uh, that should resolve this problem. All right, we're going to try to pull this thing out one more time. From this angle, you guys can see my dent in the fender here. We're going to talk about that this week as to what happened there. No, it wasn't my fault. I actually captured it on video, so you guys will have a little fun with that. Coming up in a future Q&A. We are going down. Brake lines disconnected. E-brake cables were freed up. Ground strap was broken, not by us, but it was actually broken. I don't know for how long. Clutch cable is the only thing that's in the way, and I think that'll pull through when I pull the transmission back because it's kind of in a straight line from where we're going. Okay. I think we are good. Yeah, everything looks good. Make sure that's not... There it comes.
There it is. It's out. What a hump. <laughs> well, great humps of hell. That was, uh, that was difficult. It was something. That was a lot more work than I expected it to be. And mainly because I had no manual to study. I'm somebody that always reads the books. I always go through everything first. And I, I look at other people's accounts on their doing the same job. And there's so little covered about these Type 3 subframes online and nothing in the manuals that I have that pretty much I was in the dark. And I've done all the work before removing these things, some stupid little things like the ground strap. I should have thought of that before, but for the fact that it was broken anyway really didn't matter. We're going to have to uh, fix that. I don't know why it snapped. It looked like the end of it was pulled out of it, but uh, we might be able to rivet a new piece into it and fix it, or I'll just pull one off one of the other chassis we have here. That's not a big deal. But uh, here it is. It's not as heavy as I would have expected it to be either. There's really not too much to this thing. Yow. Got no leverage on it. There it is. Transmission and the starter. Still attached. Subframe is on there along with my rear disc brakes and the stock wheels that were always on this thing. So, I think we're going to wrap up this video for today. We were going to get to cleaning it, getting all the rust off of here and preparing it for paint. We still might do it while we still have daylight, but we figured it's as good a time as any to wrap up this video. Do you have anything you'd like to, like to add or anything no. you've seen here that you learned today? I mean, I learned a lot. So did I. This is not something I've ever even covered before. Yeah, this is all new to me. All new. Well, I'm glad that I got to learn it though. I mean, this is, uh, this is different. It's all different. Type 1's, all the Beatles I've ever done, including the bus, it doesn't have anything like this. Type 3 was the late generation. This is what air-cooled Volkswagens were intended to be towards the end. And, uh, well, they never really got adopted. Mainly because they were just too expensive. The Beetle was selling really well. People were happy with that inexpensive car, so when Volkswagen put this out, not that many people were interested. That's sad. Well, it might be, but the Beetle continued to sell way beyond its life expectancy. It just continued to sell. I mean, geez, they made them down in Mexico until, what, 2005 or something? I think it was 05. They were making them for a long, long time. Anyways, there it is. As we continue to wrap up this video, you'll see us uh, disassembling the rest of it. <laughs> and preparing it for paint. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links, as well as B. McQueen's Instagram. You make sure you follow her. These videos are getting between 100 and 200,000 views in the first week, and for some reason, she only has like some 1,400 followers on her Instagram. That's pretty lame, you guys. Get over there and follow her Instagram. Look at DougShit.net. Look for her link. Clicky, follow. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. That was a sissy smack. Do it again. Don't Still kind of a sissy smack. Give it a little, a little force, a little force. I want to smash it, but you know. You hear that? PayPal in the Instagram bio. Donate to my gear fund. Hit up for PayPal. While you're at it, don't forget about my Patreon. This crap is expensive. I'm making this video for you guys. I wouldn't do it otherwise. 